Awesome, cool. Does it, does it, okay, great. Can everyone see the screen? Yeah, we can. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, I know I had a list of or some small requirements before, but if you haven't done these, so these are two things that you might need that would that would be handy to have during the workshop. We're going to be going through four project code along. So if you don't have GitHub, that's not a problem. But for the third project, you might need uh, the last three things. So node, npm, and yarn. So if you don't have those while I'm going through the first bit of the presentation, you can get those set up and then GitHub, um, you can get that set up as well, but that's optional for now. Cool. Uh, can I just get a qu quick show of hands to see um, who's who has everything set up already? No, no one. Okay, uh, awesome. Cool. Nice. I see some people. Cool. Great. Awesome. All right. Cool. Um, so for most of it, you won't need this. This is just some for the third project again. Very short, one line of code. Um, but yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Just ship it. So a bit about me. So I'm a dev degree intern at Shopify. I'm in the Carlton cohort of 2019. Um, a bit of my background in hackathon experience. I started attending hackathons in grade 11, probably like many of you are doing right now. In fact, my first hackathon was the NASA Space Ops Challenge held at the Shopify office, where along with the team, we built a crowdsourced animal migration tool using machine learning and Android Studio and took home first place. So I came into the hacker hackathon environment with little to no experience at all, um, huge imposter syndrome. But over time and consistent practice, I began improving and started to love the thrill of competing. So to this day, I still regularly attend hackathons. On average, I go to about four to six a year. And I guess I'll be presenting a short primer on how to compete and eventually win these events. So why this presentation? Um, so. Well, to be totally honest, my first experience with the NASA Space Apps Challenge was tough. 30 hours into the competition, I remember I watched my team build a fully fledged machine learning application on Android Studio using all these technologies. And I just kind of sat along, watched, helped scrape data and build a PowerPoint presentation, performing the easiest tasks from my limited skill set. And at the time I thought to myself, how was I ever gonna reach their level of expertise? How could I possibly ever create a working product in such a limited time? So looking back, I came to an irrefutable conclusion, and that was that hackathons are hard, so especially when starting out. So not only do you have to think of an idea, you need to execute along with a team in a very short period of time to make your concept into a reality. And to add on, there's an immense friction to start to get comfortable competing and an even larger sense of imposter syndrome when you get a glimpse of all the talent in the community, country, and eventually the world. Um, even to this day, every time I compete in a hackathon, I never cease to be amazed. But much like how it's hardest for a ship to overcome its initial inertia when taking off, the start of each of your hackathon journeys is the hardest to get used to. And just by being here, you've already accomplished that first step. So um, today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be presenting some tips on, I guess, how to get started and eventually master a bit hackathons. And along the presentation, I'll be taking you through building four fully functional starter apps that you can bridge off into your own implementations later on. So in this given order, we'll be building a sentiment analyzer using the movie reviews model, a image classifier that predicts the top three categories for an input image. Uh, this one's going to be with with the dependencies I mentioned at the very beginning, a smartphone e-commerce search engine using Algolia, 
and finally an image detector using YOLO object detection. So this might sound pretty intimidating to build four projects in less than an hour, but I assure you that as long as you meet next page's critical requirement, you'll have no problem with the task. And that requirement is <laughs> that there are no requirements. So as long as you come in with a positive mindset, you'll be sure to come away with some tidbits from the workshop. So without further ado, let's get started. So tip number one for, I guess, getting familiar with hackathons is to master the basics. So an IDE like Sublime or VS Code or whatever text editor you use and the command line are a developer's toolbox. The more you invest in them, the handier they can get. So personally, I use Vim to write my code and I set up a complete environment with NeoVim, but any modern IDE will do. So most of you are probably using uh, Visual Studio Code or Sublime or maybe even uh, just a text editor like uh, Notepad, but learning to use the shortcuts to find the files, search an entire folder, and do all these interesting things with Git and version control is critical for any good programmer. So again, can I get a quick show of hands? Who has um, a GitHub account and who's familiar with version control? Yeah, okay, awesome, cool. Um, I guess then most of you have some background knowledge in it. So I guess uh, without further ado, let's get started into our first um, code. So we're gonna build a sentiment analyzer. So uh, I'm just gonna quick pull in the chat. Uh, what type of text editors or code editors do you use? Is it Sublime, VS Code? I just wanna get um, familiar. Um, so just anything in the chat would be good. Let me take a look. I'm not seeing it. Uh, Sahana, or would you mind reading out some of the... Um, so Visual Studio Code is what a lot of people have been... Okay, awesome. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, uh, so exit this right there. So I just, we'll just get started um, in this folder. And the first thing we'll do is it's, this is a pretty simple application using ml5.js and p5. So there are two JavaScript libraries. So I guess in your Visual Studio code, it's just one HTML file that will run everything. So I'm, I'm gonna open it up in, um, in Vim, but you can open it up or just create any file with the name, I guess, sentiment analyzer. Uh, sentiment analyzer, HTML, and you guys can do the same. Cool. And once this is done, typically when I start off with just a blank HTML file, I don't want to type in all the scaffolding code. So um, doing a quick search, HTML scaffold template, I usually take this one and or any will do really so we're going to take this html file here and copy it in here so this should be the start of our project um can i get a quick thumbs up if everyone's sort of following along right now yep okay Awesome, cool. Uh, so again, just some basic customization. If you wanna feel free to change the title, um, this one's gonna be our sentiment analyzer. So I guess um, whatever you really want to name it. So I'm gonna name mine Will's sentiment uh, or Will's movie review sentiment. Needed, and neither is this. And neither is this. Okay. Um, so again, I'm going to just quickly make sure that everything's working. So I should be able to open my sentiment 
analyzer.html and cool. So this is a blank page. Um, blank page, nothing there. It just shows our title and yeah. So what we're going to be working with is we're going to use an imported version of the model. So we're going to take in a few libraries that are already predefined. So um, I can paste this in the chat, but paste this in chat, but um, but these are the um, scripts that we're going to be using. So. Sure. Sorry, I'm not able to see the chat right now. Is there a possibility for opening that up? I don't want people to just be copying these three things um, by hand. It might be, take a bit of time. Um, do you have trouble with like seeing the chat? Yeah, I'm not able to see the chat right now. I think you have to go back to the um, Zoom call. Okay. Yeah. So I think you just have to press an ask. Uh, I'm still having a bit of trouble with that. Uh, I guess I should have said this up before. Or you can just um, paste it in Slack and I can just paste it in the chat here. Okay, cool. Oh, I, I see it here. Okay, okay, cool. All right, cool. So if you just copy those three, does everyone see that? They're just script tags. We're going to be using a bit of imported um, imported code. So these um, are going to be imported to have our sentiment analyzer. And once this is done, there's going to be one last one. Um, this one here. And so these four uh, will be the packages we need to get started. So now that's, that's good. We're going to just get our basic code running. Uh, we're going to have a script tag inside the body. So this is going to render all our HTML elements. And something neat about this uh, P5 package is that it uses a different method of rendering everything. So you might see a bit of code that might look a bit unfamiliar uh, to React or whatever other um, typical HTML styles you use. But uh, this is P5, and their library is quite customized. So. Um, again, so let's uh, so let's get a few variables in place. So let uh, we're gonna have our sentiment, our status element, a submit button, a input box, and sentiment. Sentiment result. So these are just going to be the basic things we're going to be rendering in our code. Uh, and then in the function setup, let's create a short uh, canvas and initialize the sentiment to import this model called movie reviews. And we're going to pre-write this function here. So this model ready function will be called when uh, the sentiment is loaded. So again, function model ready. And console.log model loaded. 
So again, pretty simple. This is just all in the setup. So once the code initializes, we're going to set it to an empty canvas and we're going to preload the sentiment, which is a machine learning model into this sentiment variable that we've defined up here. The rest of these we haven't used yet. And then this is our callback function model ready. So once the sentiment is loaded, if we inspect element, we should be able to see um, this model loaded console.log once everything is ready. Um, so now we're going to use, we're going to set up our actual HTML elements. So we're going to create each of these. We're going to have a button and input box for the user to en enter text and the sentiment result. So this is going to be a label that says that assigns a score between zero and one, judging on uh, whether or not the, the, the input text is positive or negative. So again, this is going to display the element. Uh, so this is create paragraph and let's do loading model. Um, and input box. Create input. So this, if you want to preload some text in it, let's say um, this movie was awesome. You can do that if you leave it empty like a like this. It'll just be an empty text box. It depends on whether or not you want to have something in it or not. Um, sorry, can I just get a quick show of hands again? Is everyone following along right now? Uh, if anyone has any questions in the chat, um, feel free to ask. This is not the hardest, but it might be a little unfamiliar. We're good? Good, I see two thumbs up, awesome, cool. Uh, let's continue then. So uh, again, we're going to initialize our submit button, uh, create button, uh, let's say submit, and finally sentiment result. So this is going to be the label with the sentiment score. So let's do a movie review score and that and submit button dot mouse pressed and let's initialize this get sentiment function. So again, uh, get sentiment isn't defined yet. Uh, we're going to so similar with the model dot ready. This is going to, um, once the submit button is pressed, this should call a function called get submit. So again, if we open what we have right now and have a log and inspect, it should be pretty empty. Um, the model is not loaded. We should just have a blank screen. If that's what you're seeing, that should be correct. Um, there shouldn't be any errors in the console. <clears throat> so again, uh, we're going to define the function. So function get sentiment um, and let's create, let's actually uh, take our text and make a prediction for it. So get the text. So this is going to grab the text from our input box. And now we're going to do a prediction. And finally, we're going to append it to the result. So sentiment result, HTML, sentiment score, movie review score. Prediction dot score. Cool. And I think that, sorry. That should be it then. So if you're on this page and refresh it one more time, oops you should see everything pretty clearly here. Uh, can I get a quick thumbs up? Is there any, anyone having any issues? Is this what you're seeing? Thumbs up, thumbs down, good. Is, this is what you're seeing. Um, awesome, cool. Uh, so one more thing, this, this text up here is always saying loading model, so that might not be good. So in our model ready callback, we're actually going to, when the model is ready, we're going to change that text. 
So this loading model is from our status element here. So I'm just going to do status element. Sorry, this is a bit of status element, my bad. So status element dot HTML say model loaded. And good. So this is pretty much all our code. And one more time, we refresh loading model, model loaded. So again, if we refresh, it should be loading, loading model, model loaded. So now, uh, pretty simple, um, not much code, but this will actually give us a movie review score. So for example, I'd like to, uh, uh, for example, I watched a movie, this movie was awesome. Uh, and I submit, boom. So this gives us an output score of 0 0.99. And the higher it is, the more positive it will be. So again, we can test it out by uh, this was terrible. I hate this movie. Submit, and we get a very low score. So again, this is very simple. You can format this in a better way if you want. If you want to score between 1 and 100, you can multiply this by 100 and round it maybe. But otherwise, again, the CSS isn't too great. We can uh, change the size of this. We can move the buttons around. But this is going to be our first project um, sentiment analyzer. So the easiest project we're going to make today. Um, does everyone have that working? Yes? How's everyone doing so far? Nice. Awesome. Cool. So again, this is very, very basic. We're just importing the model. And from our input text, we're sending that to the model. And the model gives us an output number. So this is very, um, in a typical machine learning application, you wouldn't have uh, just a model ready to use like this. You would need to train it on your um, training data and then have a sample data. And it gets pretty complicated. But this one, um, we're just using a preloaded model called movie reviews. Cool. Um, I'm going to go back to this. Um, if anyone has any issues, feel free to message me later. Um, I can help you debug if you have any problems. All right. So tip number two, uh, very quick slide again. So fast is a feature. So one of the one of the major tips of a hackathon is to fail fast and iterate. And the way to get started is to by quit talking and actually begin doing. So again, writing code versus just ideating and creating an idea are very different things. Um, my my motto is to fail fast and improve later, improve later on. So I really like to write code. Um, if it works, um, I'll continue with it. If it doesn't, then I go back and change up the idea again. So again, uh, we're going to go back to our image classifier. So this is going to be a, a separate code along, um, similar to what we made here. Um, so again, uh, let's uh, let's close this. Oh, can can I send the script again? Yeah, for sure. Uh, would you like me to send? I can send all the. Okay, Kavi, you got it. Awesome, thank you. Cool. So again, this one we're going to be creating. Sorry, I'm just checking the chat here. All right, we're good. Is everyone good? Uh, Riota, do you have the script? Awesome. Cool. So the next one is going to be our image classifier. Uh, so. Let's, we can name it whatever we want. Again, this is going to be using the same, similar two libraries, um, p5 and ml.js. And instead of doing a sentiment analyzer this time, we're going to be doing a, an image classifier. So what we can do is we've already created this um, sentiment analyzer. So if we just create, again, image classifier, classifier.html, and I'm just going to quickly load this up here. Let's load it. I'm just going to copy uh, what we have here into here. So of course, we're going to change this up later. But this is our initial image classifier code. We're going to already have these script files preloaded. So it's going to make it a lot faster for us to write the new code. 
Um, so again, uh, naming, it, naming it is optional, whatever you want, image classifier. And again, I always love testing the code to make sure everything is working. So I'm going to open up image classifier here. And this is going to be just uh, what our previous project was. Of course, this is not what we're going to end up having as our final product. But right now, this is what we have, make, making sure it's working. Let's say terrible, uh, submit. Yeah, we're all, we're all working. We're all good. So again, this time, is everyone good from the startup? I don't want to lose anyone here. Yes? No? Sorry, can I get a quick thumbs up in the chat if everyone's good? Awesome, cool. Cool. All right. So we're going to be changing some of the code in here to make sure that it's not our movie reviews model anymore. It's going to be our image classifier. So um, I have a few key bindings that are pretty neat. So I'm just going to delete all the script code because we're going to be changing everything inside. Cool. So uh, let's define our classifier and an input image. So these are going to be our only two variables. So um, and let's also go get a, an image URL. So this um, feel free to I usually grab my images from um, Unsplash. So this is an open source image. Uh, basically like Google, Google images, but they're more HD and fine tuned. So I'm just going to, let's say, search for sailboat. Um, you can search for whatever you want. And let's say this picture here, I'm going to copy this address. I'm going to paste it in. Uh, copy image address and I will paste it in here. So um, any image on Unsplash that you want to uh, detect or you want this machine learning um, algorithm to detect, just click on it and on Unsplash and then copy the image address and you should be good. Again, we should be good here. So this is our URL. And similarly to the previous um, movie review um, application, we're going to preload the classifier. Mall five dot image classifier mobile net. So again, very similar to the movie reviews model, except this time with an image classifier, we're going to preload the mobile net um, pre-trained model. So um, this is already a lot of research has been done on it, and we don't really have to do any work ourselves anymore. This will accurately detect most of the given classes in an image. Um, is everyone good so far? Yep. Okay. Cool. So uh, let's set up our actual canvas similar to the previous one. Again, we can reload this. This should be blank now. Awesome. Cool. And our setup, we want to actually load the image um, URL image, let's say um, we're going to create a canvas to display our image. And let's do width. And let's close this off and classifier dot classify and image result and finally image to display the image at this index. Cool. So what we did here, um, similar to the setup of the previous one, we're loading the image into our canvas. So once if I reload this, this might not show yet because we don't have the rest of our um, we don't have the rest of our functions defined. But this is going to be a, a callback to 
load the image onto the canvas, and then set it at the zero zeroth index. So what we should be seeing once this is done is just a fully fledged image or whatever image you loaded from Unsplash onto this page. And, uh, I'm getting a few errors here. I'm gonna quickly debug. I think this should be. Declaration or okay, and then function result error results. This should this function again should be named a little bit better. So get result and again get result. And results, and if if there is an error, let's console that log error. Cool. And now, once this is done. We are going to This label and this result is label. Okay, confidence. Sorry, so that was quite a bit of code and not too much explanation. So again, what we're doing here is once we've classified the image here, um, we use this function to call back to display if any errors are present and we log them to the console, just helps for debugging. And um, once our results are rendered by the classifier, we're going to create um, a paragraph under the image displaying what the image is detected to be, as well as the confidence intervals for each of the predictions. So um, let's, I think this should be good. We're missing that here. And let's give a quick reload to this image. Um, hold on. Let me debug here. So results is not defined. Let's have a look. Um, where's this? Strange. Okay. Um, we forgot to define this up here. And Sorry, I'm getting a few debugging errors in here. Let me actually. Okay, that's quite strange. I'm not too sure what happened in the previous example. Okay, so, oh, strange. Okay, 
Um, is everyone up to here yet? Yeah. Okay. So again, if we go back to our web page and reload, I've used this image here, and um, it takes a while to initialize, but once it's loaded, we should see the full image as well as the three labels of the confidence intervals for each of the predictions. So again, pretty simple example. Um, if you want to replace the URL with any URL, we can try that again. Uh, copy the image address. Let's change it in here. Yeah. Copy image address. And this should be pretty straightforward. It should render the image and after a bit of time should show us our three classes. So again, catamaran, schooner, and trimaran. So again, uh, MobileNet does a pretty good job at classifying our images. So if you want to tweak this to maybe do something like uh, detecting clothing or detecting other things, MobileNet is a good preloaded model to do so. And following a similar, similar formatting style, adding a bit more stylistic elements to it, you can touch it up to create different applications. So does everyone have this working? I think I had some syntax errors before. Um, I had to quickly tweak those a bit. We're good? Awesome. Cool. And when I, for the most part, okay. Cool. Does anyone have any questions right now on how everything works? We've basically classified, uh, the classifier has the model. Cool, awesome. And then this is the callback function to load the image onto our canvas. So this is setting the image to its uh, initial width and height and then putting it at the zero and zero pixel right here in the upper left corner. And then finally, um, this shows all our results. Right, I think before I, I had the results um, for each loop, this was outside of the function. So um, if this results dot for each is outside of the got results function, it won't work because results is not defined outside of this scope. Awesome, cool. So I commented the code on the previous run of it, so it might be easier um, when I share it at the end. But again, I also have a GitHub repository with uh, the finished projects. So once, if you don't get it working, you can have a look later on and test it out yourself. Cool. Now back to the presentation. Um, image classifier. And so tip number three, make use of your resources. Again, if you never ask, you'll never know. So one of my favorite stories from this is that Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, two amazing entrepreneurs, they started off with just asking people. Um, I, I recall Steve Jobs cold called a few companies and eventually got a position um, similar with Elon Musk. And again, uh, most people, if you ask them, they are very, um, they're very open to talk and inviting uh, to share their information. So using resources like mentors, friends, books, and Coursera's and code templates, scaffolds. And again, um, most of what you're doing in hackathons is already pre, um, is already, already pre, pre-designed. Someone else has done something similar. So you're standing really on the shoulders of giants to recreate applications. So again, this one's going to be really quick. So we're going to make an e-commerce search engine. Um, if you don't have the dependencies ready, it might be sort of a problem. But again, this is only one line of code. Uh, it's using a generator or a scaffold. It's going to create an e-commerce shop in probably around five seconds, actually. So I'm going to navigate back to my terminal and I will copy this command and give it to you as well. So that's the command there. And 
npx that's why you needed to have it downloaded and create instant search app if you don't have that yet i might not have mentioned that i think it's just npm install create instant search app um yeah so if you don't have this dependency we can install it by doing npm install create instant search app um, otherwise that should be working uh, is that working for everyone this command yep yeah. okay here npx create instant search e-commerce demo we're just going to copy it and we're going to run it so e-commerce demo is the name of our application we can name it whatever we want and we're going to use the react instant search template with the app id and api key so algolia is similar to google search engine it has a very fast method of indexing each um, element in an array and then doing a very qu quick search on it like google has billions or even trillions of results and it can index all of these very fast algolia is not as fast but is also a very fast search engine so we're going to make use of it with um, an api key that is public so these two are already for these pre pre-made application and we're just going to press enter and this should clone our entire application um, you might run into some dependency errors npx might not be installed uh, that might have to be installed as well npm or node or react those uh, might you might run into issues with those as well if anyone has any issues um, if you type them in the chat i can quickly help you with them so again um, so this is the command sorry i'm just gonna paste it one more time uh, if you're able to run that and you're seeing something like what i'm seeing here can can i get a quick thumbs up cool everything's working if uh okay cool it, so it takes a while to build and react is fairly fairly uh fairly fast but not nearly as fast as just a basic html file like we did before so it's going to take a bit of time to instantiate everything so now our project is ready so I'm going to refresh here so wherever you created it you can open it and see what's inside so pretty standard uh any react any React um, application will have your public folder as well as our source code folder that has our source code. And this should, should contain all the code necessary to run our application. So this looks pretty complicated. Um, no need to understand it totally now. We've created it all with one line of code. So we're gonna CD into the folder. And now this is where you make use of your Yarn. So Yarn is going to start the server and boot up your application locally. So this runs react script starts and starts the development server and boom we should be able to see something like this uh, once it loads um, yeah it might take a, a bit of time I'm, not too sure okay. i'm going to restart it and run it again has anyone gotten the yarn server to run successfully yet yep okay so th again this was a really quick one-line example but what you should be seeing here is just a a search bar with a lot of smartphones and the smartphone attribute should be displayed and it should have Algolia instant search on it. So this is not loading as well as I thought it would. Oh, okay, awesome, cool. So this is what you should be seeing here. Um, you should be seeing, I guess, some standard phone pictures uh, with their attributes. If we want to tweak it a little bit, so you, you, we can go into our app.js. This is where all the code is being rendered. And um, so again, we can test this out again. So let's say Apple, these are all the Apple phones. 
we can um, enhance this a little bit. This, this looks a, a little plain. So instead of just displaying the name, we can display a bunch of other attributes as well. So uh, let me get this up again. So again, navigating to app.js. Uh, perfect, here we go. Article props.hit um, return. Cool, I think this should be it. So I'm going to, so in here in the hit.props, so this is um, when, when I do the search, it calls the hit function and then it returns all the matching hits. So this is also interesting. Yeah, awesome, that's much better. So console.log, I'm going to see everything that, um, everything that the page gives me. So this is a, an example of a hit. The hit has categories, description, image. So this is what we want to actually render now. So we're gonna, let's say, uh, in this hit function again. So we're right now we're only returning the attribute name. So props.hit. Um, now we're going to actually be rendering an associated image as well. I haven't tested this one out as fully as the other code, but um, hopefully this will run properly. Just hold on one second here. So again, if you look at the hit, this is what Algolia is doing. It's searching through basically uh, each of these objects. So each of these phone objects has some categories, has a popularity score, has a price, position, has a name. So right now the name is the only thing that's being displayed. So for example, if I inspect the element of this guy, um, it should have the name uh, right here. So AT&T, GoPhone, Samsung, um, Express 3, um, that's coming from this hit in here. So uh, maybe let's not do the image for now. Let's uh, actually just do something a bit easier. Let's try, um, let's try getting a, the price. So attribute equals price. And now let's have a look. Uh, that might not we Now, I'm, I suppose this should be working. I assume it. Hmm. Strange. Okay. Um, let me have a look here. Okay, um, I might be a bit unfamiliar with this one, but I guess proof of concept wise, um, pretty, pretty, um, pretty interesting example of how the e-commerce demo works uh, with Algolia search. If you want to create, let's say a bookstore or a Pokemon search index or anything else that requires a lot of, um, a lot of um, a big, a large array that you want to parse over and search, Algolia is the way to go and using uh, a scaffolding template like NPX create instant search react app, we can create one really quickly. So this is using the, um, using these API credentials, if you want to create your own and instead of searching phones, let's say searching Pokemon or, um, something else you can do so. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at an example. I I saw before of a great implementation of this. So uh, here we go. This is it. Okay. Uh, 
hold on just a second. Um, right, cool. So this is an example just scaffolded by us very quickly. Um, a better example is this one that one of my colleagues made. So um, again, same same algorithm search, but we can search by indice. We can filter, let's say, poison type, water type, grass type, and we can render each of the images as well. Um, pretty interesting concept. If you want to learn it, um, it might take a bit of time to understand the indexes, but tutorials online all have a great explanation. Okay, and I guess on to the final part of our presentation. Uh, 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 this is going to be our last code along. Um, so we're going to create something called YOLO image detection. So this is the state of the art image detection algorithm that creates bounding boxes on a given image. So before we had an image, we outputted what that image was. But with image detection, we given an image, we will draw the bounding box for of where each object is. So for example, if there's a cat that's only that only takes up half the image, YOLO image detection will draw a bounding box over that cat um, and will outline that with the label as well. So again, oops. Going to be pretty quick. I know we're running a bit short on time, but if you bear with me for a short, a little bit more. So again, we're going to create uh, one more, um, one more project. So let's say YOLO, YOLO object detection. So YOLO has a funny name. It might, it might seem like you only live once, but um, in reality, uh, the YOLO um, stands for um, I think it, it is you only look once. So pretty similar to you only look once. But um, again, let's open the image classifier. So it's pretty similar to the image classifier. So again, we're going to grab the code here and we're going to paste it in here so this is what we're going to we're going to be starting off with and as uh, i always like to test it again so again we can also stop this uh server here so this we don't have to have this anymore so um, we can close that um, this i can share with you in the chat if everyone wants to have a look at the pokemon example and so now we're going to be doing something a little bit different so um, so for yolo object detection similar as the image classifier but we're going to be loading the yolo model so uh, let's do this pretty quickly again similar to the previous version we're going to remove everything in the script we don't really need that and we're going to use our our um, variables so is everyone following along right now or was the previous uh, explanation clear no i'm going a bit fast through this Okay, awesome. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. So again, same libraries as before, ML5 and P5.js. Um, we are going to load up the model. Uh, let's do model ready. And let's just create our model ready function. So this is again a callback once the once the model is loaded. This one might take a bit longer because this model is fairly large. Um, we will log it to the console. So once ML ML5, um, I guess our library here loads the model, we'll have it ready. So some variables again. So we're going to have an image, of course. We're going to have objects this time. So we're going to set it to an empty array and we're going to have a status. So the objects in this case will represent each of the bounding boxes that our model detects. So for example, if in an image there was two cats and a dog, there would be three objects and each of the three objects would have one bounding box um, surrounding the entire thing. 
So similarly to our previous examples, we're gonna have our setup function. We're going to load the image with our URL image callback. Um, we're going to create the canvas and set it to the image width and the image image height. Let's do that. And let's create our image like so. So this is going to be loading our image onto the screen and we're going to hide it at the start. We don't want um, we don't want the image to show without the bounding boxes. We only want to display the image once the bounding boxes have been generated. So again, our function, we're going to be tweaking, sorry, this model ready function. Um, let's status true. So this status, um, it might seem redundant, but it's actually going to be a Boolean variable representing whether or not um, our model has finished running on the image and the bounding boxes have been detected. So uh, again, similarly as before, let's uh, make sure everything is working as usual. So again, blank page, this is what we're expecting. We haven't loaded anything yet. So we're all good here. So um, again, some other, uh, some other, um, so a bit more code here. So once the image is ready, We want to, I guess we can always console.log it. So we're detecting objects. So once the image is ready, we want to run our algorithm on it and detect our objects. So yellow did detect, don't detect image and get, uh, maybe just go on results again. So this got result is another function, which is a callback. And this will um, this will take all the objects found from our YOLO model and put them push them into the objects array. So go on result. Uh, we can have this error results and let's say if error, then let's console.log error. Otherwise. Um, let's do objects, objects equals results. And finally, this will draw our bounding boxes on our original image. So let's say we're going to check our Boolean variable to make sure to see whether or not our algorithm has finished running. So if status is, un is not undefined, so if our Boolean variable has um, finished loading the image. We're going to add our image to the uh, zero zeroth pick, um, corner. So again, we're loading the image um, up into this corner up here. Um, and then for each of the objects, so we're going to have a simple for loop for let i equal zero, i is less than objects dot length, i plus plus. Um, no stroke and fill zero two five five zero. So this fill is an uh, fill and these three numbers represents an RGB value. So this RGB, I think this is two fifty five is the max. So where this is completely green, if I'm not wrong, and then no stroke means that we don't have a lot a wide margin for our box. So we don't want we want our box to have a very small line encompassing each object that we detect. So let's uh, append the text as well to the object location. So we're going to take the label, let's say add a space and our confidence interval. So NFC is just rounding um, rounding our confidence interval. We don't want a crazy decimal that's really, really long. So we're going to be doing uh, truncating it a bit to make it more user friendly. So 10, 100.02. So what this is doing here, NFC um, confidence two. So we're multiplying the confidence by 100. Then 
uh, round, um, rounding it by two decimal, uh, rounding it to two decimal places. Uh, so we're going to remove um, remove all the extraneous decimals. So I I think this will make it more clear and user friendly. So object i dot x times width plus five objects. I think this also should make it a bit clearer. There we go. Awesome. Height plus 15. Um, how am I doing with time? Do I have enough time? Um, maybe five more minutes? Um, there's no other workshop um, after this, so you can go on. Okay, awesome. Cool. So again, uh, no fill. We don't want our box to be completely filled. We just want the line and stroke weight. Let's assign it to, let's say, four, arbitrary number, and interesting. So stroke 255.0. We're going to make the stroke pattern green. And finally, this is going to actually add the rectangle onto the image. So rect object, objects.x times width objects i dot y times height objects i. Um, dot w times width object i dot h times height. So what this is doing is this is creating a rectangle with this, with the width of the object as well as the height of the object, and placing it at the lo at the location where the height and the width of the object are. I think this once we close off this bracket. Uh, close this bracket off too. Finally, close this bracket. I think we should be pretty ready to go. Uh, nope. We need to inspect this. Ah, right. This is uh, okay. URL is not defined. Where are we now? Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so again, similar with our previous image, um, we need to load an actual URL. So let's uh, sure. Let's go back to unsplash let's pick a different one this time to keep things interesting the uh, people or traffic uh, sure let's this one looks interesting let's copy the image address and put it in our url variable um quick show fans is everyone okay for now yeah Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, so I think once we re reload this page, um, it'll take a bit of time. And uh, perfect. So this is uh, maybe not the best image to detect. I don't think it detected any boxes. So uh, I'm going to quickly debug a bit here. So once this draw method is called, we can actually we can actually um, log our objects just to see what we have in detecting uh, objects model ready. Okay, so in this case, there weren't any objects detected, so that's a bit strange. But uh, let's pick another image. Say dog. So go back. So it's detecting objects. Model is ready. Um, interesting. So again, it hasn't hasn't uh hasn't detected anything. Let me have a look. YOLO classes. So this is the model that we have. Um, this is the model that we have loaded. I'm just going to have a quick look at the documentation to see what classes are possible to detect to make sure that we're not uh, blindly um, going into this.
Okay, so person, car, traffic light. Um, okay, so traffic light and car should be fairly straightforward. Let's just go back to sailboat and see what happens. Let's go back to this. I, I do recall we had a bit of luck with this. Again, let's uh, save, reload, and let's have a look. The objects. Oh, strange. Uh, so it did detect. But it's just not drawing them on our page. Let me have a look here. So we logged our objects, um, updated them. We had no stroke. Uh, we added each of their labels as well as their confidence interval. We rounded by two. And we took their width, we added five. Height plus 15, no fill. Object, object, width, height. And height. Interesting. Um, so I do see something, something here. So it, it does have a semblance of it working, but right now it's not uh, not fully functioning properly. So I'm going to have a quick uh, look into the code. Um, so we have our setup here. We loaded our image. Model, um, set the image should be good. We put this on here. Two equals results. Status is undefined. Um, Object is not defined at draw. Object is not defined. At draw, so line 59. Ah, I see, syntax error right here. Okay, that's pretty common. So um, I noticed that I forgot an S here. So that that's probably the reason why it's failing. Um, we're gonna just reload it one more time and this time I, uh, there we go, awesome. So finally, this is working. So YOLO object detection did not fail me. Um, there was a small syntax error. I missed the S on this variable. So uh, pretty straightforward. Again, we set the fill, the stroke to fill green. So we're just gonna draw a bounding box on the YOLO prediction. And again, this is not perfect. It's a very lightweight model, like we've preloaded it in one line of code. So there's no way it's going to be as advanced as the state of the art YOLO um, detection. But we have a great working uh, implementation, like we've detected people, boats. And I guess that's, I think those are the only two classes that YOLO has. So um, yeah, so hopefully through this um, workshop, you guys learned a bit about ML5 as well as PL. P5, as well as um, how to, I guess, ship fast, um, master basics, and perform well in hackathons. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for holding a workshop with us. That was really interesting. Um, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, I learned a lot. Awesome, that's great. Um, so again, I will quickly post, um, I think I have a few, I, I have the code on my GitHub repository. If I can quickly put that into the channel as well. So that should be, that should be the finished, um, the finished and commented versions of all the code that we quickly covered today. And if you have any questions, um, I guess you can reach out to me on GitHub or any other means possible. So, yeah. Um, well, and Thank you so much, um, Sarah.